All right, hey guys, thanks for tuning in to MTD CNC. I'm here in Clyde, Texas today, and I'm really excited about my guest, Kelvin. Uh, you might recognize him from his Instagram channel, formerly Urban Survival Gear. Yes, formerly, formerly. <laughs> yep, and now we've rebranded, right, Kelvin? We rebranded. Now we are smooth precision pins. We tried to make what we have planned fit inside of the Urban Survival brand, and it just wasn't working, man. <laughs> it just wasn't. It was, it was more painful. It was more painful doing it and continuing than just rebranding. And when we did, it made things so much easier. And we've been smooth precision now for about five days. And in five days, it doubled again. So, yeah, we're on the right track. So that's something um, I didn't know from our previous conversations was that you were part of that kind of great migration from California to Texas. Yes, in yes. I remember very clearly the U-Haul trucks in California had no paint on them because they could not paint them fast enough in order to get them ready for rent. The rates going from California to Texas were like $5,000 a time, but the rates going from Texas to California were $7. I'm not joking. They're just like, dude, here, just get free. Just go for it, man. Yeah, free, yeah. free, free, free. Get so, it yeah. back. We want to make more money sending it back to Texas. Yeah, I remember that. I remember driving. It's like, why are all these U-Hauls white? And everyone was like, well, um, yeah. So now, now you're in Texas after spending some time in California. Um, but going further back in your background, I mean, you are a pretty unique guy, right? You not only study engineering, but acting as well. Yeah. Um, basically, in college, I was dual enrolled acting and engineering. Uh, extrovert engineer, extremely rare, extremely rare. So I did both sides equally well. And if it wasn't engineering, I would have become an actor. That's how that happened. Um, military veteran, 24 years, cockpit time, F-16s, uh, did a little C-130 time, not very much. Yeah, I did a lot of stuff. Yeah, acting, military, engineering. Mm -hmm. So how did you end up with Smooth Precision and formerly Herbal, Urban Survival Gear? How'd you end up opening Okay, that's shop? a funny story. Um, I always made things. I got this picture. I mean, it's famous. I put it up on my Instagram. I put it up everywhere. It's me in like this closet that's the size of this table, right? Okay, now, now two times the size of the table. In the house I was in at the time, that was used to store, it was used to store uh, bins, right? So I converted that into my first shop. And it had shelves. I had like a mosquito net because it was in Florida, so was, mosquitoes were biting you. And I had no AC, so I had like, it would be freezing cold in the winter and blazing hot in summer. So I had this cooler box, right? And that's how I started my first shop. And I always had a shop. And every time I would do something, I would upgrade the shop, upgrade the shop, upgrade the shop. Kickstarter happened. Everybody knows about Kickstarter, crowdfunding, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody, my friend, Brad, shout out to Brad. Shout out to Brad. <laughs> Brad Martin. He, he, he jumped me in. He jumped me in. Um, he was like, hey, put something on Kickstarter. I'm like, what? So I put a turbine on there, a steam turbine. And that went okay. I put a bottle opener on there. That went okay. I deployed, 2010 I deployed. I was gone for six months, came back. I had some extra cash. So I bought real hobby machines. Yeah, real hobby, real professional hobby machines, if you wanna call it that. And I made a pin. The pin thing hit. The pin thing hit, it hit big. Then I came out with the first tie scribe bolt like 2014, I think, 2017, that hit big. And then it got to a point to where my day job for the engineering interfered with my, interfered with the business. So I had to pick one. Mm -hmm. I picked pins. When I picked pins and went full time, everything tripled. Everything tripled. Yeah, you have a lot more time and energy to allocate to it. I had employees in my garage. By that time, I upgraded to a three car garage and it was about 600 square feet. And I had two, three, four, five machines in there, lasers, it was, it was a madhouse. And then it came to the point where I was like, okay, you're in this scenario, you have to scale, scale, you know, you have to increase, increase production. It was like, where do you wanna go? And I remember every time I, went to, every time I went to Texas, I'm like, why am I leaving Texas? The people were great, the food was great, it was free, everything, I mean, the mayor of this town works at the post office. Shout out to Ray. Shout out to Ray. Yeah, he works at the post office. So I'm at, I'm at the post office. I'm like, hey, Ray, what's up, man? 
And Ray is like, hey, Calvin, everything okay? He's the mayor. So I'm like, yeah, I'm the mayor on speed dial. Um, Swiss Lays, bought two Swiss Lays, bought Dusan, got some employees, killing it, loving life, rebranded. Yay, here I am. Nice. And, and you have like a beautiful building now. I mean, clean floors, now. clean tables, now. good technology. Thank you. Is now. this your first building? It is my first. Well, yes, it is my first building. Mm -hmm. But you see the power of the, the internet. I researched everybody's shop. I went to a lot of people's shop. I said, okay, why is your shop awesome? And that's the beautiful part about being able to go around and travel and see the way people are doing different things. I mean, yes. honestly, that's my favorite part about MTD. I get to come here and see what you're doing, you know? <laughs> you got a good job, man. You got a great job. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's really cool to see everything you have going on. Um, what would you say your oldest machine here is? Or at least the longest you've owned it, I should say. The Fanuc. Oh, the Robo Drill, huh? The Robo Drill. That was, <laughs> okay, that was my first big boy mill. Mm -hmm. That was, oh God, that must be like 13 years ago? No, no. <laughs> this came with me to my garage. I haven't had, I haven't had the heart to, to get rid of it yet. Mm -hmm. It has not been turned on in like five months. Okay. But they're workhorses, hey? I mean, they're if you got the work for it. No, yeah. it's great. It's just, I'm a production shop now. So everything that I make is used and is made on the machine it'll be used on. So think about this. You have a 250000 well, now it's inflation, $330,000 <laughs> Swiss machine, and you're making a 50-cent part on it. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can take a $60,000 machine and make almost the same amount of parts. It makes no sense to put that cheap part on the machine that doesn't need the precision. Yeah. So you put them on the mill because it's more cost effective. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when I got here this morning, you were at your desk crunching the numbers. And yeah. that's one of the things that you love to look at, hey, and you spend a lot of time evaluating. As you transition to more of the business owner, you spend most of your time crunching numbers. It's like, okay, where's the efficiency? Where's, because I, I will tell a thing. I'm in this to make pins for you guys and to keep my boys in, to keep my boys employed. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. So I'm always trying to think of how can I make their lives better. If you look around the shop, a lot of things like um, carts, uh, carts, every toolbox is sh shadow boxed. I mean, you know where tools are at all times. Every machine has a manual. I mean, literally button push by button push. Military, um, shout out to military. <laughs> Every button, every button push is written down. So they literally go push button A, push button B, verify red light turns green. Light green, good. Light red, call, call a friend. So yeah. Yes. And you kind of train your employees up too. I know you said um, you had someone in, coming in that's a little bit newer. Maybe and you're going to do some training. Um, he's actually right behind you. Oh. <laughs> No, oh, um, and he's running, running away yeah, on the Swiss. <laughs> yeah, um, he's been here three days. Oh, man, so you have it set up where employees can just walk right in and yeah. start um, making parts, eh? Yeah, yeah, um, they're making parts by day one. They're autonomous by day five. They are qualled usually by day 10. Nice. And that's on a Swiss with no experience. Man, you got your ducks in a row, huh? <laughs> have to. Fantastic. Well, you know, okay, being in the middle of nowhere, you're not gonna find a plethora of Swiss employees. So we had to evolve a way to get somebody from I don't know Swiss to I know Swiss mm -hmm. as fast as possible. And right now that time is about two weeks. Fantastic. Um, so for the MTD CNC audience, uh, how can they get in touch with you? Where can they find your pens? Uh, yeah, Instagram, I'm always on Instagram at smoothprecisionpins.com. <laughs> Smooth Precision Pins. The website, smoothpositionpins.com. I mean, the reason we named it like that is like, why'd you name it such a, such a basic name? Because once you hear Smooth Precision Pins, you can't forget it. It's like, where do we find you? Smoothpositionpins.com. Where are you on Instagram? Smooth Precision Pins. Um, what do you make? Smooth Precision Pins. What's so good about them? They're Smooth Precision Pins. You just keep saying the name over and over again, you pretty much get what we're about. And that's the best branding, right? The, the old KISS method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep it simple. It's like, dude, this is what we do. This is what we are. Go. Mm -hmm. Well, fantastic, guys. Make sure to look at Calvin up on Instagram. And thanks for talking to me today. Thanks for the pop, man.